Friends, this week our gospel talks about Lazarus. And first of all, just to mention, that's not the Lazarus that you might think of uh, with uh, who was Jesus' friend who was raised from the dead. This is a different Lazarus. Uh, but this reading, this, this parable, uh, presents to us a very stark depiction of the finality of the afterlife. But as I was kind of thinking about it, you know, I already, in the last couple weeks ago, I talked about this already, and so I wanted to, to focus on something else. And that is that we should be convicted, it should convict us of the necessity to evangelize others now, because later is too late. But first, before we can evangelize others, we must be convinced of the truth of the gospel. So this week at the uh, priest assembly with the bishop, um, we had a number of good talks, and one of them was by somebody who works um, very closely with evangelization in uh, the Archdiocese of Denver. And among many things that he talked about, he mentioned uh, that there was a, a survey done a couple of years ago um, of hundreds of pastors and ministers from different Christian faiths, including Catholic priests. And they were asked, what is your church there for? What is the purpose of your church? And he said that 90% of the ministers, pastors, priests said that their church is there to make disciples. And that makes sense because that is the mission of the church, to make disciples. Now, that same question was asked to 90% of their parishioners or congregants. Or I'm sorry, to many of their parishioners and congregants. And 90% of the parishioners and congregants who responded to that question, what is your church there for, said, the church is there to serve my needs or the needs of my family. This is a major disconnect. And it it speaks of a very consumerist idea of the church. The church is there to serve me. The church is there to give me something. Friends, we can't have that mentality of the church. We are here to become disciples and to make disciples. One of the things that maybe we should ask is, how can I come to church and be fed so that I can feed others. Again, our mission is to evangelize. That's what Christ gave us. That's the great commission from Jesus Christ himself. Go make disciples of all nations. And, of course, that is one of the great things that Bishop Hying has been trying to do with his Go Make Disciples initiative, which I haven't talked about much, although I've been integrating it into some of my bulletin articles and my homilies. You might not notice it, but it's there, that our mission is to go make disciples. In order to go make disciples, again, we first must be convinced. And we can only be convinced if we have a personal encounter with our Lord. We must have that personal encounter with the Lord, especially in the Eucharist. And so I might ask us, what has been your encounter with God? What has been my encounter with God? Now, I believe I shared once before that I had uh, a very personal encounter with our Lord um, during adoration where I had a vision of Christ offering me a part of his skin, uh, the very uh, body of Christ. But I also wanted to share with you another moment, uh, which was very impactful for my a vocation in particular. So one summer I was at a, um, a program called the Institute of Priestly Formation that takes place in Omaha for seminarians to help, uh, help in their spiritual life. And part of that program is a seven-day silent retreat where each day we meet with a priest. He gives us you know, three or four uh, passages from the Bible, and we are supposed to take... I think it's four holy hours a day contemplating, meditating on each of those uh, Bible passages. And one night, uh, it was late at night, it was um, between 11 and and midnight, 
Uh, I was in the chapel there in Omaha at Creighton University. And the passage that I was meditating on was the Gospel of John and the crucifixion. And so I'm sitting there praying, and I'm looking up, and above where the Eucharist is, there's a beautiful crucifix with, and it's the whole crucifixion scene. So it's the crucifix and Mary on one side and John on the other. This is exactly what I'm meditating on. And as I was meditating on that, especially the words that Jesus said to to John and Mary, where he says, "Uh, woman, behold your son, son, behold your mother. I had this deep feeling that Jesus was saying that same thing to me. And that he was asking me to take the church as my mother to uh, be the son or to the, the father to uh, the church. To be John, like the, like the apostle John, to the church. And that was one of those uh, major moments in seminary where I was affected by Jesus himself. And I began to really take that seriously, that vocational call to be a priest. In our reading today, our second reading today from uh, St. Paul to Timothy, he says that we need to pursue righteousness, devotion, faith, love, patience, and gentleness, and to compete well for the faith. Brothers and sisters, we are in a cultural battle. Make no mistake, we are in a cultural battle, and we need to compete well for the faith. But we can only compete with the food from heaven. We can only be victorious in the battle with Jesus. We cannot compete. We cannot win on our own. This is why it's so important for us to keep Holy Sunday. Just as we need physical nourishment every day, we need spiritual nourishment that is only found in the Eucharist. I was thinking also of another story that I was told. There was a bishop who went to visit a monastery, and he asked the monks there, what is the most important part of the Mass? Now, anytime you ask anybody who's in a religious uh, life, you know, they're going to want to come up with the best answer, right? What is the right answer? What's the best way to uh, impress this bishop? And so, you know, one of them said, well, it has to be the readings, right? That's where we hear the word of God. Another said, well, it's the Eucharist. That's where we're fed. That's where we receive Jesus in the Eucharist. Another said, you know, it's the prayers or this or that. And finally he said, no, the most important part is the end. Go forth. The Mass is ended. And why is that the most important part? Because it is our mission to go from this place and bring what we have received here to the rest of the world. That go forth, the dismissal at the end, in Latin it's ita misa est, which there's not a direct translation, but the best translation of that is go you are sent. Ita misa est. And that, by the way, is where we get the word mass, misa. It's also, however, the same root word for mission. It is our mission to go forth. What we receive here in word and in the body and blood of Christ cannot just stay here. It's the opposite of Las Vegas. It can't just stay here. It must go out. We must bring it to others. We must be convicted to share the goodness of God with everyone. The gospel warns us that many will not listen, even to Jesus. If they will not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded if someone should rise from the dead. Jesus is predicting his future, but he's also predicting, and he knows, that many will not be convinced even by his resurrection. Friends, we cannot be afraid to boldly live our Catholic faith. Yes, we may be ridiculed, we may be mocked, or worse, but good for us. 
Remember what Jesus says in the Beatitudes. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when, you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. Thus they persecuted the prophets who were before you. If we are persecuted, if we are mocked here on this earth for our faith, so much better the reward in heaven. And again, we cannot be afraid. As Peter says in his first letter, now who is going to harm you if you are enthusiastic for what is good? But even if you should suffer because of righteousness, blessed are you. Do not be afraid or terrified with fear of them, but sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts. Always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks you for a reason for your hope, but do it with gentleness and reverence, keeping your conscience clear, so that when you are maligned, those who defame your your good conduct in Christ may themselves be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that be the will of God, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. As we hear that from Peter, and as we hear that from the other apostles, we need to be filled with apostolic zeal. The apostles knew full well that they would probably be killed for spreading the gospel, but they did so anyways. As we hear in Acts, they rejoiced when they were persecuted. They were willing to go to the ends of the world and to give up their own lives for the sake of the kingdom. And this has been true for Christians throughout the ages. Think of the Jesuit missionaries who have gone around the world to India, to China, to Japan, Korea, Vietnam, South America, North America, and have been martyred by the dozens for the will of God to spread the gospel for love of God. Have we done our jobs? Have we done our part in the spiritual battle? As, as we heard from the prophet Amos, prophet Amos in the first reading today, woe to the complacent. Friends, we cannot afford to be complacent in our spiritual lives. God is constantly reaching out to us. I often think of that, the image of God reaching out to us, his hand out to us. We must be constantly reaching back to him and pulling others along with us. He is constantly radiating his love to us. We must be actively receiving and returning that love to him and to others. Many people are waiting for an aha moment. Oh, yes, there, now I know that God is real. But it already happened 2,000 years ago. If someone raising from the dead doesn't stir us to action, what will? Brothers and sisters, as we receive the love of God in the Gospels and the Eucharist, equipped with the means to compete well for the faith, let us be resolved to go forth and proclaim the Gospel in our words and in our deeds. I pray that we can all be convicted to receive God's ever-merciful love and to never be complacent, but to share that love with all of our brothers and sisters in the world. Praise be Jesus Christ, now and forever.